Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Bohemian Orange Chicken. That's right, I'm gonna show you how to make an incredible and easy chicken dish that was inspired by not one, but two duck recipes. Duck a l'orange and a Bohemian style roast duck. And unfortunately, duck can be hard to find and kind of pricey, which is the bad news. But the good news is, these flavors work tremendously well with chicken. So with that, let's go ahead and get started by generously salting some chicken thighs on both sides. And yes, these are bone-in, skin-on, which I highly recommend. Okay, I don't think we want to make Eastern European comfort food with pieces that are boneless and skinless. I mean, it's just not done. But anyway, once we have those generously seasoned, we will head to the stove where we're gonna sear these on high heat in a heavy duty pan with about a tablespoon of olive oil in it. And we do wanna start with the skin side down. And what we're after here is some beautiful golden brownness, which is gonna take maybe four or five minutes, but we cannot go by time, right? You have to go by what you're seeing and feeling. And the seeing would be the golden brown part. And the feeling would be that chicken releases from the bottom of the pan, right? If your skin is stuck, it simply means it hasn't seared long enough. So keep your eye on things and make decisions. I mean, you are after all the Andrew Zimmern of exactly when to turn. And by the way, he's the one I got the idea from for combining the orange duck with the caraway from the Bohemian style. And it really is a magical combination. Oh, and I should mention, the searing isn't necessarily for the appearance. Although, of course, that's part of it. And of course, flavor. But we're mostly trying to render some fat out so we don't end up with the dreaded flabby skin. All right, nobody. And I mean nobody wants flabby skin. And then what we'll do once all those have been turned over, and we've seared that other side for about two or three minutes, which is not as critical because of that whole skin thing we just talked about. But anyway, once we've seared that second side a little bit, we'll turn off the heat and remove that chicken to a plate, and we will set that aside until needed, at which point we'll go ahead and pour off any of that accumulated fat from the pan, and we'll reserve that to maybe cook some cabbage in. Okay, I'm sure you'll figure out something delicious to do with it. And then what we'll do once that's been poured off is toss some diced onions into the pan along with a nice big pinch of salt and believe it or not, one tablespoon of white sugar. And we'll put our heat back on to medium high and we will cook these onions stirring for a few minutes until they start to soften up and turn translucent. But more importantly, that sugar starts to caramelize and almost burn to the bottom of the pan. Oh yeah, we're making an onion caramel. And when you brown or almost burn sugar, it actually loses a lot of its sweetness, and you get some beautiful, complex, kind of toasty, bitter notes, which is going to pair perfectly with the orange and prevent things from becoming too sweet. So yes, we're preventing sweetness with sugar. And this is going to be a little bit hard to see in the video, because the bottom of the pan was already brown from the chicken, but you'll know because you'll start to see some dark brown stuff sticking to your spatula or spoon, which we don't want to throw away. So if you look at the middle of the pan, you might be able to see me scrape that off and toss it in, and besides that, the pan will start to smell like caramelized sugar. At which point your mixture should look a little something like this. And just to help you relax, even if you go too far with the sugar and it actually starts to burn, the sauce will still taste amazing. So don't be scared. And once that's been accomplished, we'll go ahead and toss in some minced garlic, which we will stir in and only cook for about 30 seconds. All right, it's okay to almost burn the sugar, but not the garlic. And then once we've sizzled that garlic for half a minute, we can go ahead and toss in the rest of the ingredients, including the zest from one large orange, plus about two thirds of a cup of orange juice, preferably freshly squeezed, which will be way better than anything made from a concentrate. Plus you can't zest a can. And speaking of freshly squeezed, we will also add the juice of one lemon, followed by two cups of chicken broth or stock. And we'll also at this time raise our heat to high, and we'll wait for these liquids to start to boil, and while we do, we can finish up with the seasoning with a very small hint of cinnamon, All right, just a small pinch. Plus we'll also do a few shakes of cayenne just to stay in shape. And then last but not least, just a little bit of freshly ground black pepper. And that's it. Like I said, we'll just wait for this to start to boil. At which point, besides the occasional stir, we will wait for this to reduce by about half. And I know I tell you to never guess in the kitchen, but this time it's okay. Whatever you think half is, that's fine. Or another way you can judge, when we have about a half inch of liquid left. And once we think we've reached that point, we can go ahead and turn off the heat. And this is what mine looked like when I thought it was just about right. 
And then what we'll do is go ahead and transfer our chicken back in, definitely with the skin side up. And do not, under any circumstances, forget to add the accumulated juices from the plate. All right, if you throw those away, we cannot be friends. Acquaintances, maybe. Friends, no. And then before we add the last and maybe most important ingredient, we will take a spoon and give these a basting. And yes, I'm basting and scraping because I want the liquid on the surface, but not necessarily lots of those diced onions. And that's it. Once the tops are nice and moist, we will sprinkle over a tablespoon of whole caraway seeds, which yes, you do have to go out and buy, but it's totally going to be worth it because that, along with the orange, is going to produce one of the most delicious and unusual chicken dishes you've ever had. And that's it. Once those tops have been carawayed, we'll go ahead and cover this tightly and we will transfer it into the center of a 350 degree oven for exactly one hour, at which point we'll pull it out and take off the lid and we will grab our basting spoon and give this one more baste. And just because chicken's cooked and safe to eat does not mean it's done, especially when we're talking about bone-in thighs, which is why after we baste these, we're going to pop them back in the oven uncovered for another 20 minutes to make sure that meat's really tender and will easily come off the bone, but also to help finish browning the tops and toasting those caraway seeds. And we should still have a decent amount of liquid in the pan, but if we don't, go ahead and add a splash of water or broth, since we don't want this pan drying out, since what's left is going to be the sauce. But I had plenty, so after basting, I popped that back in. And after roasting 20 minutes uncovered, our bohemian orange chicken should look like this. Oh yeah, that is looking good. And then as far as presentation goes, I definitely think we want to give this one last baste, just so our skin is nice and glistening. Oh, and I should have mentioned by now, if you don't have one of these fancy French braising pans, you can just prep everything in a skillet, and then transfer it all into a casserole dish, and cover it tightly with foil, and follow the exact same procedure. And it's going to work out beautifully. And speaking of beautiful, for a final touch, I'm going to take one of these zesters, which cuts beautiful thin ribbons out of just that orange part of the zest, where as you know is where all the flavor comes from. And I like to scatter that over the top. And if you don't have one of these, you can just simply grate it over. It will have the same effect and look almost as nice. And that's it. Our bohemian orange chicken is ready to enjoy, which I'm gonna do on some traditional Czech bread dumplings, which were warmed up in butter. And I'm gonna moisten those with a little bit of our sauce before serving our chicken on top. And yes, I did saute that cabbage with that reserved chicken fat, plus a little touch of butter, which along with the dumplings is the perfect side dish. And of course, I'm going to show you how to make those dumplings in an upcoming video. All right, those you have to know how to make. And even though they just look like slices of baguette, they do not taste or feel like that. And they might just be my favorite style of dumpling of all time. But anyway, back to the chicken, which we will top with a generous amount of what is now an orange sauce. And then as fast as humanly possible, I'm going to grab a fork and knife and dig in. And that, my friends, really was truly spectacular. All right, besides looking and smelling amazing, the flavor of that chicken with that caraway-scented sort of sweet and sour orange sauce really isn't like anything else I can think of. Just very unique and extremely memorable, especially when eaten with these traditional bread dumplings, which I'd love to talk more about, but I can't. All right, as I mentioned, that's going to be a whole other video. But this chicken, just as a standalone dish, was one of the most incredible things I've eaten in a long time. And for whatever reason, if you're not familiar with caraway, that is the thing that makes rye bread taste so good, especially when you toast it. And as most people will agree, rye bread does make the best toast. And if you happen to be thinking to yourself, I bet at some point he adds more sauce to those dumplings and chicken. Well, you would be correct. Right? These dumplings are nothing if not absorbent. So don't be shy with the sauce. But anyway, that's it. What I'm calling Bohemian Orange Chicken. I just absolutely adored everything about this. And don't forget, stay tuned for the dumplings. But no matter what you serve your Bohemian Orange Chicken on, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.